Hello everybody, this is Jerry here, Minomoto, back from VAM. Gotta wash my bug collection off of the Pan America. When I'm done, let me show you what I got. Hello everybody, this is Jerry Minomoto. Not sure if I said that already. Just got back from Virginia. Great ride, last two hours, 100 degrees, stop and go weather. I'm done for the day. Gave the bike a pretty decent wash just to get rid of some of those bugs. Uh, got in the shower, still hot. Just gonna cover a couple things about this amazing motorcycle. And uh, I think that's it. I'll call it a day after that. Uh, first of all, let's talk about some things that kind of bother me still. First of all, this windshield. It, it just has a lot of play and flex in there. I mean, if you can see the, the it just kind of moves. It kind of wiggles. Let me try it from, oh, no one wants a close up of that. <laughs> just from behind, once the wind starts hitting it, it just, I mean, that's a lot of play. Anything over 65 miles an hour, it gets a little bit shaky. The only fix I have, this is on the third setting up. Uh, I am contemplating getting the Harley Davidson tall windshield. It's two inches taller. Two inches might be a lot. So if I ride with it in the lower position, the most secure, maybe it won't bang around. Not sure. Rumors have it, new windshields are coming. So we'll just see how that works out. Um, my notes. Top boxes. I have the GV rack uh, on my bike with a, f I am just spinning around right over there, 47 liter top bag. I took that on the bike with me and it carried most of the weight. Um, I did have some stuff strapped to my seat. I'll slide a picture in. Uh, but what that did that really made the bike heavy had a hard time engaging the side stand because of the adaptive ride height. When I would come to the stop, it would want to lower down that however far it lowers. In order to get the bike on the side stand or the jiffy stand, I'd have to actually physically lean the bike over to the right side for ground clearance and then pull the stand out, then work it back over to the left and hope it didn't kick out from under me. Um, it was a pain. I, I'm not sure if that's a design flaw or not. Um, I would definitely have to reconsider that with that top stand or top box. Look, I'm already distracted. When the bike was loaded, you push it around a little bit and it gets a little clumsy. This little thing got knocked off a few times. Yep, I'm not even in frame. This little guy just came off. They snap back on easy enough, so uh, I guess just a, something to point out that these are 99% wind deflector. If you go down, that is not going to do anything for hand protection, lever protection. Uh, a nice set of bark busters would be good if you go off-road. I'm not a big off-roader, but I will probably look at bark busters. Anyway, just for protection for the bike, my hands and whatnot. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, so we talked about that. Oh, and this guy. I was so excited about these two. This, there's a lot of people, actually not a lot. I think I got like 100 followers or something. These bags, odd shape. They do not really hold a lot in there. What, what, what am I doing with the camera? It's too hot, I'm too tired. Um, just the odd shape, I think if you have uh, anything to go in there I'd put my camera bag right here it's a small medium and it would just sit with this much room left not too much you could put in there um, with my tools extra pair of gloves and the camera bag this bag was done it has this extra space uh, in case I guess you want to bellow things out but uh, you, you can't pack like that it's more if it shifts around so most of my packing was on the top case. 
that's probably where the extra weight came in. The other side case is not too bad. Well, no, it's bad, but I'll put a picture. We have the cutout for the exhaust here. And then once you start getting inside, there's not a lot of space. Uh, once you lay your stuff flat, you have this cut out for the exhaust. So really you only have this section. Um, that's an odd section. I'm not really sure what would fit in there or I think I'd put like a little cooler or something. Uh, great for around town. It's awesome. Really don't need too much more. Um, it's a pain in the butt if you want to travel. I will definitely be looking at new side cases. I do not know if I'm going to be going with like the adventure ones, the heavy duty ones. Um, I would love to try them out. I just don't know how valuable they are to me. Um, I'm happy with a GV product. Maybe I'll go with that. Won't do it till off season anyway, but keep an eye out for something used maybe. All right, so that is my dislikes. I'm going to do a cut now. Get to my likes. That's not a lot of dislikes. Those are very minor things. Less than a week before I left, I went ahead and installed this Garmin Zumo uh, GPS in there. Hardwired it to the battery. It worked great. Suggestion, if you're going to get one, play with it before you go on your trip. There's a I mounted it where my phone was, uh, and it worked great. The phone would get glare. Uh, backsides or whatever. Uh, this had no glare. I don't know how they do it. Uh, I am going to mount it right here in the center of my windscreen um, just to make sure it's in my line of sight. I don't need to be taking my pulling my eyes off the road to look at what's coming up. Uh, also in this little section if you can see is where I keep my easy pass. Got this little black silicone condom thing around it. Uh, keeps it very low profile. Most people don't even know it's there. Um, when I moved my GPS away, I mean when I added my GPS there, I took down my phone mount. Ah, so I started using this more. This is the SW Motec Micro Tank Bag or Mini. I think it's their smallest one. Uh, pretty much big enough for a phone. Uh, backup battery, glasses, some little glass wipes, Tic Tacs, not much. Um, has these nice little built-in things you can run cables through. So I actually run this through to my power outlet. I'm not going to show you. On the side of my dash. Uh, when I go to get gas, I just kind of flip this guy up, lay it right here. Leaves a gas tank and the ring exposed. To reapply it to the ring, it's really easy. That's it. The magnets, oh, almost tripped. The magnets suck it in place and just put it right where it needs to be. All right, my best purchase. These Biltwell Punisher XL foot pegs. Hope they show up a little bit. They're the best. Uh, the ones that were initially on the Pan America were kind of small, I thought. Um, I've never had to change uh, sport. Oh, <clears throat> jam my thing underneath. I never had to change my uh, foot pegs before. I never had pain from foot pegs before. I'm wearing the same riding sneakers and boots that I had on my last bike for a year. So I don't know why this is new and this is just old man minnow. Uh, I swapped them out. They did fabulously. Plenty of uh, room to move your foot around uh, on the highway. If, or actually when I got into slower traffic, if the bikes start to heat it up, heat it up, heat up, and it did. Uh, I actually have a lot of room to move my foot towards the end of the peg. Uh, to still keep it resting, but to get away from that heat. Uh, awesome invention. These guys, they're, it's beautiful work and I think it's the best thing I probably put on this bike. Uh, something else that happened on this bike though, it's kind of crazy. You're not going to be able to see it, so I'm going to put a uh, picture up. Riding out for breakfast one morning, uh, Virginia, my quick shifter decided to fall off. Um, 
just the bolts came, the screws came undone and boop, couldn't shift the gears anymore. Uh, luckily, I was in a low traffic place, moving slow, stuck in second, the bike did fine. Got in a parking lot, busted out my tools that I'm glad I carried and uh, had to put it back together. It was in a very bad spot, so it took about an hour just to get in and get it where it needed to be. Uh, just, I guess the vibration of the bolts were a little bit damaged, um, like the thread on the ends, I, it, you know, I guess it happened. So I did uh, order a couple more bolts for it and added some blue Loctite on the road and the thing was fine. Um, that's all jumbled together. Ordered the bolts separately. When I was fixing this in the parking lot, I added the blue Loctite and everything is fine. So back on the road, I think I put another 600 miles on it. 200 riding the dragon and all that fun stuff. And then 400 miles back home. Two things. First of all, Harley Davidson, you need to put parts for these motorcycles in these dealerships. Uh, you, you have these sp these touring models that have been on the road for uh, millions of miles and together, not just one. And your dealers know what breaks down, what the problems are. Um, if you really want this bike to be considered uh, an adventure tour, and I'm going to say a, a sport touring bike, you're going to be able to support it. Uh, people might have less of a problem when these little things happen if they can get help. You have dealerships all over the country, no excuse for it. Uh, I would also suggest start throwing some chains and sprockets out to these dealers so they can keep them in stock. It does custom. Stock kits, that's all they need, stock parts. Anyway, I could go on for that forever, but I'm not. This motorcycle is phenomenal. It did everything I asked it to do. Twisty roads, highways, couple off-road roads, gravel, nothing really crazy though. Um, it, it does it all. There, I don't think that there's anything that this bike can't do with confidence. Uh, anything above 3,500 RPMs, it just it'll it just runs runs like the wind, bullseye. It'll just pull for days. Uh, the the motor is amazing. The brakes are phenomenal. Uh, the feedback is great. You know when you're you're honking down on them. You can feel it. The suspension. Other than my little overpacking, I guess, issue, uh, it is awesome. I, the the ride is so plush when you want it to be, or turn it up a little bit, and it's going to give you what you need for those twisty roads. I was running a custom uh, mode on the bike. I copied the road mode for my. I'm, what am I even talking about? I put on a custom map uh, for riding this bike. I copied it from road mode. I went ahead, used the sports mode suspension settings, turned up engine braking and throttle response just a little bit. Well, engine braking, yeah. Turned them up and this thing is a beast. Best motorcycle I've ever been on, 30 years. Sports tour, you guys are nailing it and you don't even know it. Adventure Tour does it all. Love the Pan America. So happy with this purchase. All right, that is all I got. It's getting hot. I need a break and a beer, maybe, if I were to do that. Don't want to offend anybody. So, a drink. You guys ride safe. Thanks for watching. Be kind to each other. Minnow is out.